Hello everyone and welcome to a wonderful attacking game uh, from the penultimate round of this year's European Individual Championship. It is um, uh, Romanian Grandmaster Constantin Lupulescu uh, against uh, uh, International Master from Azerbaijan Ahmad Ahmadjada and it features uh, the Benoni defense which is interesting in itself and it's always interesting to see how to play against the Benoni defense because it's been a, it's been a favorite opening of uh, many strong players uh, throughout history like um, Kasparov uh, played the modern Grandmasters play at Bobby Fisher played it. Uh, Bobby Fisher even employed it in his World Chess Championship match against Boris Poski in Game Three. He won a very nice game. Uh, I think Bobby Fisher never lost a game with the with the Benoni defense, um, other than the the one he played against uh, Spassky in the 1992 rematch in uh, Sveti Stefan. Uh, but that that was uh, wasn't organized uh, under FIDE. So it was a very it's a very strong opening, and here here you will see uh, just how one uh, slight imprecision can just make the entire. Uh, p p position explode. So let's check it out. Uh, Constantin has the white pieces and he opens with d4. Uh, we have knight to f6, c4, and c5. This is the Benoni defense. We have d5, e6, knight to c3, and e captures on d5. This is the modern Benoni, very standard stuff. C captures d6, e4, and pawn to g6. Bishop to e2, we have bishop to g7, and now knight to f3. So all modern uh, theory castles and now usually everyone just castles here but here we have bishop to e3 first postponing castles by a move and this is the line which uh, makes uh, uh, the game a lot more interesting we have pawn to b5 now also a standard idea uh, you want to get um, a white away from the defense of the e4 pawn and it doesn't matter how you do it if knight captures then you just capture on e4 and if bishop captures you're still going to capture on e4 that's the idea if knight captures queen to a5 with check you're going to block queen d2 bishop, queen captures on b5 now stops castling and even if knight captures on d6 you will still uh, prevent white from castles uh, and attack the knight on d6 uh, but uh, you don't have to do that you could also play queen captures on b2 you could trade queens let's say captures capture Rook b1, bishop c3, check knight e2, um, yeah, and now bishop to a6 again stop uh, white from, from castling. So this is all um, uh, very known stuff and it's not uh, good to capture this pawn, uh, even though some people play it. Uh, so here we have pawn to e5. This is the main idea of the position. Uh, you uh, attack the, the knight on e6 and you try to create a passed d pawn. If you create that, then already you are very, very uh, close to having a great game. Uh, here we have d captures on e5, bishop captures on c5, now attacking the rook, rook to e8, and bishop captures on b5, attacking the rook once again, and now we have pawn to e4. Uh, here uh, Ahmad does not want to uh, try to save the rook or, or play something like knight e7, uh, save the rook while develop uh, the piece. He wants to go for the attack here, and uh, again, there's nothing wrong with this, uh, I'm, I'm sure you can play this. Uh, bishop captures on d8, you don't have to capture, you could also keep the tension with knight to d4, but bishop captures on e8, we have e captures on f3, now bishop captures on f7, a nice in-between move, as of course you, you don't want to just give up the bishop for nothing, uh, with check, king captures, now queen captures on f3, and now uh, the way to play this, as you can see, uh, black really has to start developing pieces, so it would be best to do something like bishop g4, and once you move the knight to d7, attack the bishop, so everything should come into game uh, with tempo. But here, knight to a6 was played, which also comes into the game with tempo. Okay, the bishop on c5 is hanging, uh, but it is uh, much, uh, much different. Bishop to d4 now, and here comes knight to b4, and there's just no coming back from this knight to b4 move. Okay, you are threatening knight to c2 to attack the rook, the king, and the bishop. It will be a wonderful fork uh, but who, uh, kingside castles and now knight to c2 and it seems like black accomplished everything he, he's gonna trade even more material and then he's gonna have a good game but there is one move that he missed so feel free to pause the video and try to figure out this move that just makes uh, black's entire position fall apart while i give you a couple of seconds <clears throat> So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on calculating all of this as it's uh, quite a lot to calculate. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to d6. That's the move that uh, Black overlooked when he went for this knight to, uh, knight to a6 to b4 to c2 idea. And now the problem is you, you can't just trade. If you play knight captures on a1, queen captures on a8, okay, you can bring your knight back into the game. But now it's a matter of the very simple bishop captures, bishop captures, and knight to e4. 
and the the, the black king is uh, stuck in the in the open. The d6 pawn is nicely defended, and you don't really have a good move. How do you how do you play this? A queen captures an a6 is coming, then you have to worry about the, the these two pass pawns. And if if you try to defend this, uh, then even rook to c1 just wins the game because you can't move the knight. If you move the knight, then rook to c7 wins the queen. So it's completely unplayable. Uh, in the game, uh, it wasn't played. In the game, bishop to a6 was played. Strongest way to play this is bishop to d7, and I'm just going to show what happens because uh, white will have to work for his meal, but it still, it still is winning. Uh, bishop captures, bishop captures, now rook a to d1. You want your d pawn uh, d defended uh, at all costs. Rook to b8, getting the rook out of harm's way and also going after the b2 pawn, but now just rook to d2. You attack the knight, you prepare to double up on the d file, and there's no good way to, um, to actually play this. Knight is always coming to d5 to e4. For example, if you capture on b2, knight to d5. And now if rook captures on a2, you're going to play knight captures on f6. And after queen captures, now you're going to play queen to e4. And at uh, uh, some point, uh, black will lose material. Now the knight is defended. You can play uh, queen to e6. Also, you can uh, offer offer uh, a, a queen trade because uh, the queen can't capture first. The rook has to capture first. Now let's say queen f3 check, queen to f6, queen to b3 check, now connects with the rook nicely. So you block queen to e6 and now queen to c3. And now there's no good way to attack the... Uh, to attack the, the the queen and the knight will hang. So you're going to see something like queen to e4 defending the knight, uh, f3, and there's uh, uh, no, no way to continue the defending the knight. You're going to have to move something like queen to b4, rook captures, queen captures, rook captures, and now you're just up the exchange, you're up a pawn. Of course, this is now uh, completely winning for uh, Lupulescu. So instead, after d6, we have bishop to a6, now attacking the rook, and now bishop captures on f6. We have bishop captures, now rook a to c1. <clears throat> Uh, offering a trade of rooks. If the bishop captures, then you're going to capture on c2. Uh, or even better, if the bishop captures, you can play king captures on f1. And now after the knight moves, attacks the queen, queen to d5 with check, king to f8, and now knight to e4 again. Uh, just unplayable. The, the bishop is hanging. If you move the bishop, then the knight is hanging. If you, if you move the queen, then the rook is hanging. There's still the passed pawn. Rook is coming to c7. Checkmate will be in the air. Uh, uh, completely winning for white. So in the game, rook 8 to c1, knight to d4 was played attacking the queen here, and now just queen to d5 with check. King to g7, rook f to d1, and he was in this position on move 22 that Ahmad Ahmadjada resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more uh, to be done here. The knight really uh, has nowhere to go, all of the squares are taken, rook captures and d4 is coming on the next move, and it's uh, very hard to... <clears throat> Uh, to try something if, if you go knight to f5 then knight to e4 then rook to c7 all of the all of the standard ideas that uh, are are uh, that have already been played if rook to c8 you can capture play d7 uh, it's just uh, completely un unplayable uh, for black for example queen to d8 knight captures now the queen cannot capture because you promote the pawn so king ca has to capture knight to c uh, queen to c6 with check will pick up the bishop on a6 and uh, it, it's only one of the lines, but uh, absolutely everything here is winning. So this is one of the games uh, from the penultimate round I, I really wanted to show you uh, because it's such a nice way to, um, uh, to beat the, uh, the Benoni defense. And maybe if you enjoy uh, uh, playing against the Benoni and you uh, maybe also uh, haven't uh, thought of maybe the postponing your castling and just going for bishop to d3 and then trying this very nice line, you can see that very good things happen uh, for, for white in this line. And it's not like it's very risky. Uh, if you if you ask the engine, it will always give white like a plus, plus uh, 0.7, plus 1 advantage. Of course, if uh, you allow it to crunch the numbers long enough, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, but, you know, it, it's perfectly fine to, to go for it. So if you enjoy it, do try it. Maybe it works out for you as well. Uh, it, it all uh, came down to this uh, wonderful pass, the D-pawn, and then after D6 was played, that's just it. No, no uh, the, the point of no return for black. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Very nicely done by Konstantin Lupulescu. Uh, in the... <coughs> uh, sorry about that. In the lead, uh, uh, we still have uh, a tie. It's Alexis Arana and Kirill Shevchenko. And going into the final round, Sarana will face uh, Shevchenko. So uh, we couldn't ask for a better uh, final round 
uh, of the European Individual Championship where the only two players on eight, eight out of eight, Sarana and Shevchenko, will, will face each other. So uh, probably if it's not going to be an absolute snooze fest, uh, it is the game I'm I'm going to cover first from uh, the final round. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Good luck uh, fighting in, uh, the Benoni. It, it's a wild opening. Um, uh, m many uh, great players have played it. Uh, Bob Bobby Fischer even, uh, like I said, uh, I never lost a game with it throughout his entire career. Only that one game uh, against Spassky in 1992 in, in uh, Sveti Stefan. Uh, so yeah, it, it's a wonderful opening. But if you uh, if you, if you try too much, you might you might get burned. Uh, so yeah, I once again hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to wish a very happy birthday to Otto, and I would like to thank Joe Wildiers, uh, Ryan Kavanaugh, Bob Bosho, and uh, an anonymous person for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.